Hey, so this is a pretty quick video on the difference between direct messages uh, and private channels and public channels in Slack. Um, and this is really just so I can send it out to other folks as a kind of reference. So Slack has like three different sorts of uh, channel. The first one is uh, a direct message with just one person. So what we've got here is me talking to Jess and this kind of works, it's just, it's just direct stuff basically. Um, then we've got direct messages with multiple people. So this is a DM with me, Bruce and Heidi. And then we've got the same kind of DM, but with loads of people. I think you can have up to six or seven people. So this is one with Agnes, Bruce, Heidi, Jess and me. Um, then we've got private channels, which uh, have this little lock next to them. Uh, and then we've got public channels here. So these are kind of examples of each of these types of things. Um, and I've seen a lot of companies that use Slack uh, where predominantly they're talking direct messages and maybe private channels. And, and it, it has a real impact on how effectively you can use Slack. So um, group direct messages. Uh, I mean, first of all, like th these ones, these kind of normal direct messages, they make sense for short conversations. The problem with them is you can't bring other people in. Um, but, but they're generally kind of useful for those, those conversations which are like throwaway, almost an equivalent of WhatsApping someone or text messaging someone. Um, but a lot of companies use these, these kind of big group channels uh, or group DMs. And the problem with these is that you can't bring anyone else in afterwards. So if you end up having a long conversation in one of these, um, it's impossible to, to then, after the fact, bring someone into this conversation because it's stuck just with, with us five people here. Um, and so it, it kind of, it gets in the way of transparency of information. It gets in the way of, of people kind of joining and seeing what's going on in other places. And so I, I generally try to suggest that most places avoid using group DMs altogether completely. And if you need it, you can use a private channel. Um, the other problem with these is that every single message sent in a group DM will automatically send a notification to the recipient if they have DM notifications on. Uh, and that can be quite frustrating if you've got two other people having a conversation uh, and, and you're not really interested. Whereas in private channels and public channels, notifications only get sent when you at mention someone or tag them in. So I generally say that, that these these kind of multi, multi user DMs are, are not a good idea in many circumstances. Um, the last thing that's a bit of a problem because they're not named, it's quite hard to find them. Now here I've only got two of them but I've been in slacks where I've got like a hundred of these uh, and mostly they have the same people in them, but there's like one different person in each one. And it's really, really difficult to understand what, what that conversation, like what conversation should go in there. So I definitely say avoid these kind of group DMs. Um, private channels are a little bit different. So this is a private channel that I've invited uh, Bruce to, uh, I think Bruce and Heidi. So if we go and look at the people in here, it's, it's me, Bruce and Heidi. Um, and nobody else can see this channel. So this is better than group DMs because when I send messages in here, it won't notify everyone in here unless I do an at channel or I at mention people by name. Um, and, uh, and we can also bring people in. So if I'm in here talking about some stuff that's secret and I'm like, oh, I need to bring Jess in, I can just come in here and, and I can invite Jess to this and she'll be able to see the whole history of this channel, um, which, which is super useful because you can bring people in and kick people out and, and all that kind of stuff. But it does, it does mean that other people in the organization can't see, uh, can't see this channel. They can't join it. They have to wait for someone who's in it to invite them. So these are definitely better than group DMs. But I've been in a few slacks um, where the default for creating new channels was to make private ones. And so everyone's talking in, in these private channels. And the big problem with that is that they're not findable. So other people can't find channels according to name and join them. Um, and they hide information away. So even admins or owners of the Slack can't see private channels that they're not part of. And this can make it quite hard to organize your Slack. If you've got like, I don't know, I did some work a while ago trying to work out what channels we should use in a company and how, you know, where communication was happening. And it turned out every time I talked to someone new, they told me about like another another 20 private Slack channels that I'd never seen and didn't know existed. So it made it very hard in bigger organizations to kind of get a grip on on what what conversations happening in what places. Um, 
the other problem with private channels is if you make something as private by default and then you decide you want to turn it into a public channel, you can't and the information in that channel is hidden unless you invite everyone in your organization. Um, so generally, it's better to default to public channels for everything. So here's an example of a public channel. It's called Dogs. Um, they're findable. Anyone can come and find uh, and find one of these. If I go in here and try and find a channel that I'm not part of by browsing channels, um, there's this temp channel um, that I'm not part of that doesn't have any chat in it at the moment. But th this means that I can join this channel, post some messages, get involved, and then if I want to leave the channel, I can just come up here and uh, and go and leave the channel again. And and that's great because it means that um, uh, it means that uh, I, it, yeah, it means that I can I can sort of join the channels I need for as long as I need them and then leave them again. Um, I've been in tons of channels, uh, tons, tons of slacks where where they feel really dead because all the chat's happening in direct messages and private channels. And the only reason I've been able to work out that lots of people are using Slack is because the, the metrics that in the admin dashboard show me that there's millions of messages happening every day, but you can't see any of them. And that's really bad for um, for creating kind of openness and trust and transparency of information sharing. So uh, summary of that, I guess, default to public channels um, wherever you can, unless it's really sensitive information, make it public. Um, only use private channels for genuinely private stuff and stick to sensible naming conventions for them uh, and avoid multi-user direct messages at all costs. Um, there are some good use cases for them, but uh, if you're starting out with Slack, it's generally not a good idea to start with them. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of a, a top level overview of the difference between individual DMs, group DMs, private channels and public channels. Um, I'm making a few more of these kind of videos and putting them all up at this URL now and I've also got a YouTube playlist uh, if you want to go subscribe to that.